Then Abdul Jabbar took over. Although plagued that morning by another crushing migraine, Kareem played at his height. In a rare pregame locker room speech, he had reminded his teammates about will and desire and victory coming from within, and he demonstrated all of that and more. He was playing with passion and pride. You hear a lot about uh, Celtic tradition and Celtic, Celtic pride. Uh, we have some, some proud athletes here, too, and uh, they're not the only team with pride. Kareem finished with 30 points and 10 rebounds, and the Lakers won going away. The Celtics headed home, where the Lakers will try to do it again. Oh, boy. Well, I think we're going to try to order another migraine for Tuesday. Byron Scott deserved the spotlight, and there would once again be a Boston Garden showdown. Everything is back there to be had. History, the Boston Garden, uh, Retired numbers, world championship banners. Uh, we have a chance to do something that no other team has ever done. Go back to Boston Garden and win a world championship on that parquet floor. The Celtics had never lost a world championship series seventh game, and that winning tradition had become a Boston birthright. The mood was concentrated and intense and the Celtics stood ready to answer all questions about the team's character and heart. The media attention reflected great national interest and glorious Celtics past revisited the site of past Celtic glory. The celebrated Laker faithful were on hand and who was that with former commissioner Larry O'Brien. But mostly, this was a classic occasion for your basic basketball fan. Hi there once again, everybody. This is Johnny Bone, live on courtside here at the Boston Garden. I'm Chick Hearn, and tonight, the seventh game of the World Championship, where the Boston Celtics and the Los Angeles Lakers get ready for the World Championship of Basketball 1983-84. It's game number seven. From historic Boston Garden. The World Series of Basketball, the NBA Championship Series. What Celtic fans lack in subtlety, they make up for in volume. Boston had lost only once at home, all playoffs, and the riotous garden atmosphere inspired them again. But the Lakers were not bowing to tradition. They were making their run at the crown, and the score was tied at the end of the first quarter. Great games bring out great performances. And Cedric Maxwell responded to the call. A former playoff MVP, Maxwell had become a role player in Boston's offense. But in game seven, he heard his number called a lot. He worked outside and down low, forcing his way to the basket. And he spent a lot of time at the free throw line. The Celtics fought out to a six-point halftime lead and what they hoped would be their 15th NBA title. In the third quarter, the Celtics opened it up with quick hands, bruising defense, and some accurate outside shooting from reserve Celtic role players like Danny Ainge. The Lakers had lost their composure, and when Boston scored the last nine points and stretched their lead to 13, the Celtics seemed only moments away from their goal. But the Lakers had their own pride, and in the fourth quarter, they stormed back, hitting the boards, playing with championship intensity, and cutting into the lead. Down to five, minute and a half to go, and the Lakers look poised for one of their classic runs. But DJ stripped magic and raced for the hoop. Cooper pinned him clean, saving a game breaker, and the Lakers raced back. Worthy hit, and the lead was down to three. The championship that had seemed so secure was in peril, but Boston still had Bird, and they went to him. A big miss. The Lakers moved down court. They could close within one. 
But Magic Johnson forced it up. The ball turned over, and Dennis Johnson again went to the hole. This time, he was fouled. Pat Riley could see the championship fading. Johnson's free throws brought the lead to five, and Riley could stop the clock, but not the Celtics' celebration. Boston fans saw their tradition continue. A new set of faces in the championship picture. The Lakers would remember for a long time the one they let get away. Larry Bird's two free throws capped the scoring, and in moments, the Celtics would be champions. Time finally ran out on the talented Lakers. It was Boston's year. Boston celebrated a new generation of Celtic champions, ball players who carried and were carried by Boston's winning tradition. Larry Bird was chosen the playoff MVP, and Red Auerbach grasped his 15th NBA title. In the Laker locker room, there was great frustration and the thoughts were on how they lost and what might have been. They, they, they are really bound. They did a great job, and uh, that's why they're the champs. You know, we, we helped them, we gave it to them, and they won it at the same time. In this series, Commissioner, what a spectacular NBA finale. NBA Commissioner David Stern did the honor. It's my pleasure to present the Larry O'Brien Trophy to the NBA World Champion, 1984 Boston Celtics. Congratulations to Red Auerbach. Number 15, what a way to go. The Celtics had moved their tradition forward. The entire city was overwhelmed by the players' passion and the Celtics' pride. Yes, we got Celtics pride. We're in the green down deep inside. Celtics pride. Yeah.